Welcome back to the Naked Proverbs podcast, where we unclothe the truth about black love, family, and marriage. My name is Nick Scott, one of your hosts, and I'm here with my husband. What's going on? It's your boy, Rich. And today we're going to talk about how we knew, how I knew she was the one. Right at the start of every episode, we always remind our listeners that we are not trained, licensed, or professional therapists or counselors. We have been married for quite a while, and Naked Proverbs is our platform to share our advice, our opinions, our experience, and our stories. If you haven't already, make sure you're following the Naked Proverbs on whatever podcasting platform you listen on. And if you like what you hear, show us your love and support by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes. Thank you to all our listeners. We appreciate you tuning in each week and spending some time with us. Thank y'all. As older parents now, there are some things that I know can be frustrating because it's almost like you get left out of the parenting conversations or when people have opinions about things, it's always geared towards new parents or new moms or new dads. And I think that that is very rude. I think it's rude too. It almost completely discredits and disqualifies parents who have older children. And, and I think it's not just that, that it's rude, but it's a disservice to our community. And what I mean by that is when you choose to ignore people because their kids aren't at the same stage as yours or they're still not in the house, you miss out on great knowledge and experience, real world, not no theory, not no I read a book, not no I think, I hope, but like you really miss out on the truth because while every child is different, I can at least share with you what it was like to have a three-year-old, a five-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 15-year-old, even an 18-year-old at this point, you know, so I think that sometimes when, whether it be on Facebook or conversations, when you get together with your friends and people kind of dismiss you because you're not in the current stage they're in, it, like I said, it's really rude. I don't feel like we're dismissed when it comes to new parents seeking advice. I think new parents absolutely feel some type of respect for parents who have older children and they do, they want to know what to expect at this stage or what did you do when your six month old constantly dropped food on the floor just to see it fall on the floor and watch you get up and pick it up. Or how did you get your baby to sleep through the night? Or how did you potty train your child? So I do think that there is a certain level of respect that new parents have for parents of older children. But I think when it comes to those conversations, I remember when I was a new mom and I was excited to be a new mom and I wanted to connect with other new moms. And I think in 2020, it's a lot easier for new moms to connect with other new moms and to have that support group. The thing that bothers me about it is that it's almost like, well, we're the new mom crew. And because your kids are 16 and 18, you're not a part of this crew. So it's almost like you said, it's rude that they can have these conversations amongst each other and not even consider that if I'm posting something on my Facebook, that it's not just a new mom thing. Like right. I get you're a new mom, but struggling with your body type is a woman thing. First of all, not just a new mom thing. It's not just carved out for new moms. And I think that's the big thing really is it's not just about the stages your children are in, because a lot of times I think that these groups and these conversations get focused on that. But the challenges that we face as parents or the challenges that you may face as a husband or a wife or a man or a woman, those challenges and things that you face don't change necessarily just because your children are older. Right. Right. So if I'm struggling with how to provide for my family as a new dad and I'm still kind of struggling with that as a middle aged man, mm -hmm. then that's still something that I may want to have conversations around with other people that can relate or that can provide advice 
And so to be left out because I'm not a new husband or I'm not a new father, it it can be, like I said earlier, rude. But I mean, I think it's also it can be heartbreaking in a way because you don't feel like you belong, even though you're like, but I should belong like I should be a part of this group as well. Just because our children are different ages doesn't mean that I'm not also facing some of the same struggles. Well, I know it. Ha- I feel like it happens a lot in the female mother community. Does it happen? In- no, no, no. I was just trying to, you know, make sure I had really had, I had something to offer to the chit chat. But uh, really, because I think even as recent as a few weeks ago when we went to the baby reveal, mm-hmm. because we've always been the parents with the oldest children. Yeah, always. <laughs> even when we were in our twenties, we always had you know the child that was two. And everybody else had no kids or our kid was five and somebody was just having a baby. Mm -hmm. But I have found that I think men are more open to understanding. And especially now in 2020, we're more open to talking about feelings and things that at one point were kind of dismissed as those aren't things men talk about to being honest. Like, look, you know what, man, I am struggling with this or that. And So I feel like we don't necessarily have these boundaries of, well, you're not a new mom. You're not a new dad. You're not in this group. So you don't get to be a part of this uh, because we look at it more from the standpoint of we're all men and maybe you're not struggling with this, but me voicing that I am might help you because maybe somebody else in our group is struggling with it. But we have never really been given the freedom to voice how we're feeling or voice what's going on in our lives. So now that we have this freedom, like we didn't have some cry sessions and stuff. And I'd be like, oh, wow, that's very different. Wasn't expecting that. But it's really good because then as a man, I'm like, well, it's okay for me to have these feelings. It's okay for me to cry or for these things to happen. Because in the past, these weren't things that we even spoke about. It was just kind of like you just dealt with it on your own. So there's more. It sounds to me like there's more of a community or a brotherhood within fatherhood. Yes. When it comes to being a dad and a husband Mm -hmm. where as and I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the fact that men are now showing up and being very, very present in their kids' lives, whereas on the woman's side, there's a clear line. It's it's a clear line that even if we had a baby today, right? We have a 16-year-old and a 18-year-old. If we had a baby today, I'll be damned. I'd be part of that new mom crew. I'd be part of the runaway dad crew. Even though <laughs> <laughs> even though I've been a mom for, you know all these years right. it's almost like all that experience goes out the door now all of a sudden i'm a new mom again and it's like i'm part of this new sisterhood of new moms as if i didn't as if i don't know or i didn't know how to go through some of the things that new moms are going i don't know i it, it just bothers me it bothers me that all the marketing is towards new moms and what about those of i mean i'm still a mom like sir joiner truth said ain't i a woman Ain't I a mama? Right. I'm a mama. I mean, and I think that those are great, valid points because, you know, I've seen it, you know, even in things that you've shown me or whatever, that is kind of like, I, cause I always sometimes forget that my mom is a mom, right? Okay. Like yeah. my mom is my friend. That's my buddy. That's my girl, <laughs> you know, Joanne, that's my girl. And so for me, sometimes I can forget that she's a woman, she's a mom. So as an example, when I deployed to Iraq, this is some years ago, and it took me years to really understand the things my mother had to stress through <laughs> because of my choices, right? Because I just looked at her as, well, that's my mama, but she's grown. She's a woman. She, <laughs> like, you know, I'm not her baby no more. I'm a grown man. Yeah. And so for me, it took my own child going off to college for me to start to understand, like, man, that's hard. Like when your child leaves, it doesn't matter how old they are, how old you are. That's your baby. That's your child. You know how crazy the world is. And that's yes. And so for me, I think that 
that was my enlightening moment of I will always be my mom's baby baby boy like Period. I'm always gonna be her baby no matter how old she gets no matter how old I get no matter what I accomplish no matter what I do what she does and I think that that kind of relates to what you're saying in the sense of like just because your child is older doesn't mean you still don't have those same nurturing feelings and those same you don't still go through those same worries and concerns and things that a new parent is going through it's just at a different stage one of my really good friends he once told me it doesn't get better as they age actually it gets harder yeah and it's i struggled with understanding that because i'm like what your kids are grown they're grown, independent grown. they got jobs they ain't asking for money they are living their lives and he was like, yeah, but you know what? You don't control what they say, what they do, how they live their life. They could have a boyfriend or girlfriend that you know is a bad choice. And there's nothing you could do about that with a 25, 30, 18 year old grown in their mind person. Right. And so to me, I think that that kind of relates. Ain't I a mama too? I often get the question, how did I know that Nick was the one? And recently when we were in Texas, I was talking to my line brother because we stopped by his house. Hey, man, I know you listening. <laughs> Hope y'all doing all right. I miss y'all. And we started talking about because they had just recently celebrated one of their anniversaries. 11 years. 11 year anniversary, mm -hmm. wedding anniversary. And so we were kind of talking about how did you know? When did you know? What was that moment? And I've always said and my wife sometimes is like, mm, I knew pretty much day one, like she's the one she is going to be my wife you didn't even know me though but it was just you know what and that's the whole purpose of this conversation I think is how do you know right and so for me there I didn't have a list you know because we talked about the list right you got this list of she's got to or he's got to accomplish and have these things I didn't have a list but there were certain things that I knew were important to me and one thing was you were different. Like you weren't like every other girl. You weren't loose. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I loose. was I was not a hoe. Loose. No. She wasn't loose. Mm -mm. She wasn't all the woman thou art was mesmerized not loose. by my eyes. No. First woman on earth ever that wasn't <laughs> mesmerized like I for real your eyes are beautiful I mean I know they're cool I'm not gonna lie no they're uh, yeah they're but very but pretty. like I even thought back to when I was in elementary oh gosh remember how I was telling you I used to put that uh water and some some uh soap in my hair yeah. to try to make my hair curly yeah because I got that natural good hair but wait see <laughs> oh see he's bringing up all types no, of stuff no, I'm he trying about, to get he to my about point. these light eyes I'm trying to get to the point he talk though. about good hair right I'm trying to get to the point so my, I, I never really realized my eyes were different as crazy as that may sound. No, that makes sense. I just, I never, it's not like I look in the mirror and I just gaze into my hazel eyes every day. They're green. They're just, they're just there. Right. Mm -hmm. So I remember as early as probably the fifth grade, I was in the principal's office for some reason. I don't know. I was probably in trouble. Um, and these old women, they were black women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Old women. Old enough to be my grandmother, not even my mama. Yeah. Baby, you have the most beautiful eyes. Because I mean, because, you know, I, I had low self-esteem for a lot of years. So I'd walk around with my head down. So when I would look up, because my dad was big on looking people in the eyes. Yes, right. He is. So when I would look up, people would be like, oh, my God. And still to, de to this day, when people do that, I'm kind of like, what? Because I don't look at my eyes as something special. Right. I just I mean, I see with them. So, <laughs> so when you weren't like, oh my God, your eyes are so beautiful. Like I had literally my entire life. So that's the first memory I have. And I'm sure there's memories before that. Mm -hmm. We were 18 when we met. So for 13 years of my life, literally all I ever heard was how beautiful my eyes were. Right. So when you didn't initially just be like, oh my God, then I was kind of like, oh, wait a minute. Well, that's been And she's cute. And she ain't impressed yet. Wait a minute. Got to step up my game. And I don't even have no game. So now what do I do? <laughs> so, you know, for, so for me, I think that that was one huge part was you were different. Well, okay. I, I, I need to respond and react. A, 
my initial reaction is I've always felt, and this is, I'm, I'm explaining myself mm-hmm. why I did not react because a, I'm a, I've been world traveled my whole life. But you ain't ever seen nobody look like me, but I've seen black people. Hey, you've seen my family, but ain't nobody in your family got eyes like mine. You've seen my family. My family comes Looking, all can shapes, y'all see sizes. my eyes in the video. Hugh, they're gorgeous. Thank you. They are, are, they're beautiful. They are. I agree. But I have, I had been around black folks with light eyes my whole life. I've been around black folks with curly hair my whole life. So for me, it wasn't anything special. Yeah. Cause your grandpa hair is bomb. <laughs> he does have some Man, really hair be nice flowing. hair. <laughs> I'll be like, dang. <laughs> he really does have some nice hair. So for me, it wasn't anything like, okay, well, he, like you, it's like he has light eyes. And I do feel like, and I think this is a whole nother topic that maybe we can tackle later on, that there are so many preferential treatments given to black children who have attributes that are not common, like light eyes or long hair or curly hair. And for me, I just never played into that type of thing. So for you to say, okay, she was different. I am different. I've always been different. I can, I can admit to that. Sometimes you're different. Get on my nerves. Is that what we're talking about? What are we talking about? I'm sorry. Go ahead. How you say that you knew and okay. Well, you say that you knew right away. I didn't know right away. That was one. All right. Then as time passed, because I mean, you know, we had a few months where we were, you know, in class together and things like that. I actually got to know a little more about you. And Um, I was weird. I was so weird when I was young. But that wasn't, you know, for me, I didn't see you as weird. Like when I think back, I was strange. (laughs) Like (laughs) I was peculiar. (laughs) You might have been a little bit peculiar. I was weird. You know, but I think that, you know, oftentimes people will say men marry women like their mothers or women will marry men like their fathers. And I always was like, I don't even like my mama. Now, y'all heard me earlier say that's my bestest friend, right? But growing up, I didn't see her as my bestest what friend. What child likes their mom She was my mama. Up, and I was like, ooh, she mean. But, like, I didn't, I didn't realize the many qualities that the two of you share mm-hmm. until later in life. Well, sure, after and, we get married. Right. But I think that I unknowingly realized it, if that makes any kind of sense. Like I may not have identified that you were a strong black woman, Mm -hmm. but I, and I know my mother's an extremely strong black woman. Right. Mm -hmm. But I must've seen something in there because I like, if you would have asked me at 18, are you going to marry somebody like your mom? I would have been like, hell to the no. Right. Ain't no way possible. But now I look back and I'm like, Oh my God, I married. Like there are so many qualities and traits that the two of you share. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I love it. And so for me, I think that it's one of those things over time, there were different circumstances. I could see that. That just really reinforced that idea of she's the one. I I can see that. I can see how you are going to be attracted to what you're comfortable and familiar with. Right. Mm -hmm. And if there were as strange as I was as a young adult, and I'm probably even stranger now as a middle-aged woman, but there probably were some things about me that you were familiar and comfortable with that made you feel at ease Mm -hmm. and not, you know, you said you had no game, but maybe it didn't make you feel that way. Maybe it made you feel, you know, like, oh, well, she's cool because blah, blah, blah. Right. Not necessarily she is exactly like my mom. Right. I mean, because while I always say I didn't have a list, I quickly just jotted a quick list of, well, how did I know? And some of those things, these weren't things that I I was looking for because real talk, I wasn't looking for no wife. I wasn't even looking for a girlfriend. Like I told you, I had low self-esteem. I that could count on one hand how many girlfriends I had leading up to college my freshman year in college probably like two fingers so that wasn't my intention it just kind of happened but when I look at your character when I looked at your personality your beauty of course I mean that was the first thing that like you know I mean let's let's be real because everybody always tries to act like beauty's not important or I'm not looking well I don't understand why I come 
he can like that girl, but he don't like me, and I'm all the stuff he want, but I'm just a plus size. Well, if he don't like plus size women, I'm sorry, sis, you ain't going to fit what he's looking for because he's not looking for a plus size woman. Yeah. Or if you short, brother, I'm sorry. If she's not looking for a short man, I don't care how good your character is, your personality, you funny, and you got good credit. It doesn't matter. You're short. Physical attraction is at the top of everybody's it list. It matters. I don't care what nobody So let's saying. stop trying to be politically correct and act like that stuff don't matter. Because I know some full-figured women that have some amazing husbands. You know why? Because he was looking for a full-figured woman, and he found him one. My cousin. He loved his wife. Oh, my gosh. Boy. Oh, my gosh. So I'm just being real, right? <laughs> so let's let's stop being politically correct and making it sound like, that shouldn't even be on the list. Like it, like somebody's shallow simply right. because they're like, I want somebody that looks like this. Yes. So your beauty, like it stood out. Like, and you know what? And even as adults now, because we're quote unquote young adults, if you want to call me that. We 18, were young adults. I was 18. I was a fool. We were. But <laughs> now as a middle-aged man, you know, you often get like stopped in the store by random people that'll be like, Oh my God, are you a model? Because your beauty is real. Like it's legit. Right. And I never would have thought that I could have a woman as beautiful as you never. Like even I still question it at times now just because that's, I mean, like I said, and it's not because I had low self-esteem. It's just like my wife is legit could be a model. Um, I mean, I, I, I clean up well. Well, for me, I had a list. Was I tall enough? Well, we know we've already discussed that before, mm. how height how was definitely rude. on my list. I, de- I had always wanted to be very tall and I <laughs> have always thought that I was taller <laughs> than I was until probably about five years ago. I'm only five, five. But in my mind, I was always like five, you seven or yourself. eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? right. Like in my head, I was tall. So I wanted somebody who was tall. So that was like, you know, that wasn't a deal breaker. But I wanted somebody attractive. I'm that. Because I knew if I had kids that a plus, positive and a positive make a positive. Just Is that the, really what that, that does? Yeah, mathematically. I mean, it's I math. Don't, I don't know math. <laughs> it's math. <laughs> and, you know, I knew I looked good. So I wanted to be with somebody that looked good, too. I wanted someone that had good moral character. I wanted a hardworking man. I did not want... A man who was playing video games all day and trying to be a rapper at the age of 45. (laughs) Like, I knew that. I knew that I didn't want anybody that had children. Where I, when I went to high school, there are several boys in high school that had babies in high school. I didn't want that. I didn't want to be nobody's stepmama because I had a very bad experience with my own stepmother. So I knew that I didn't want to be anybody's stepmother. So there were things about you, but initially, you didn't like me. I didn't. Well, because you mm. checked boxes, but it wasn't like you had. Well, they didn't say this back in the 90s, but in 2020, they would say swag. Like you wasn't a swaggy guy. Like you were. I was a nerd. A, like he. Listen. Oh, look, I was on the chess team. He was I had fine. Academic I mean, he is fine. Like fine, I mean, yeah. fine, I, fine. I, like I girls it. all over campus yeah, swooned. They, loved me. they wanted me. Swooned. But he just like for me, it was like like my dad had like talking about you know parents and being attracted to somebody like your parent. Mm-hmm. My dad is cool. Like he got that swag. He he, he does. Do. E- even as a sixty plus year old man, he still got that swag. Like he always has. Like, but my dad wasn't a nerd. He, like like no. you read books. Yeah. <laughs> You've always read books. You talk, you know, you used to talk about how you read these ridiculously complicated books at the age of 12. And I'd be like, what kind of dude? Yeah, I read Moby Dick when reads I was like the Odyssey when they're in elementary Iliad school. Iliad and Odyssey. Those are my favorites. <laughs> you know? Yes. Like who does that? Like nobody made you do that. You just decided you wanted to read it. And so I think for me, that type of thing was intriguing because I am a thinker. And even though initially I was like, oh yeah, you know, he's kind of corny or whatever. Once I got to know you as a person and once and persistence, persistence always pays off. Y'all, my husband courted me. She didn't even know what that was. I didn't. She was pushing me to the side. 
I did. She almost damaged my ego that I didn't even have. How did I almost see? We don't want to have a therapy session. Do I'm just saying, I mean, because I'm thinking like this, right? We talk about how did I know you were the one? Yeah. And I think a lot of men, I was hardcore, though. A lot of young men face what I faced where they are a great catch. Mm -hmm. They have a lot to offer, but they're not as swagalicious or they're not they as that cool or they're not they're as corny whatever and you call it corny i don't think it's corny. i don't think it's corny anymore but i mean i'm just but i'm just i mean i think that a lot of young men they they're they they are damaged because women look at them as well you're not what i see on instagram and in videos and all these other like you are a great person you are going to be somebody's great husband, a great father, all these things that women say they want, but you just ain't, you ain't bad boy enough for me, or you're well, not edgy enough for me, or you're not, and I think that, that that can damage your your self-esteem, definitely. I can see that, but in my defense, because I'm talking about me, mm -hmm. as exposed as I was to the diversity of the way that black people looked, I was not exposed to the diversity of what a man is or what a boy was supposed to be back then. So there was only really one type. Like my whole family for the most part is women and not women with husbands. It's just a bunch of women. And that's what I was exposed to. And it was like, you know, there's you know, guys who are, who have swag or who are hardcore or street or like the Instagram dude or the guys in the videos, that's like, that was like mainstream. So like I said, I never met a guy. Like I'm from an era where Crips and Bloods were like, for real, for real. Mm -hmm. And those were the types of dudes that I was exposed to. And those to. were my friends, but I could never be them. So for me, it was like, <laughs> you know, like you reading these encyclopedia books and that was just weird to me yeah. it was just weird but I didn't I, I mean I got to know you and I knew like I knew your heart and once I got to know your heart and got past that stuff that doesn't really matter like who cares if your husband has swag like I got it now don't play I mean <laughs> she better quit downgrading me girl I'm not downgrading I am you top shelf you are top shelf that's why i'm with you above the top shelf if what's you, above the top shelf top top shelf if, look it, that's the ceiling i'm double top shit ain't no ceiling for my life there ain't no ceiling there ain't no ceiling so you wouldn't <laughs> let me tell you something i would not still be here if you were not top shelf i wouldn't you know so for me it did come down to could this man take care of me this was what our freshman year so we're 18 i didn't propose until what 22 so let me think 96 we met and i feel like was, we proposed we in indiana 99 state. no we were in indiana i state feel 99. like it was 90 i was i was so maybe it was 2000 it had to or be 01 it was 2000 or 2001 we got married in 2001 so it was 2000 so it had to be no i, I proposed to you in yeah, december of it 2000. was 2000 so from 2000 1996 that's four years so mm -hmm. four years. So there was four years. Twenty two. Is that oh. twenty two or twenty one? What are you talking about? How old you were? Who four cares? years. It I was thought four that's what years. I thought that's what we no, were figuring out. I wasn't trying to figure that oh, out. Okay. I'm trying to say something, but now I don't remember. So it was basically four years, right? Between I knew and I actually proposed. And during those four years, it wasn't like we were dating that whole time or mm -hmm. anything, but there were some moments in that four years that just was like you're not gonna find nobody better like what are you waiting on and i remember one of those moments for me was i was in college second time this is my second go around y'all and i had a bill due and i'm not talking about like no they wanted a 100 bucks they wanted some thousands of dollars it was like two three thousand okay that's a whole lot of money when you 19 20 that's years a old a lot of money now no it ain't that's chump change but anyway uh <laughs> So I'm like, oh, my God, I am about to get kicked out of school because I can't afford to pay again. And I don't know how we started talking about it. And you basically was like, well, how much is it? And I don't I think you went and just paid it. 
I'm pretty sure because I'm pretty sure you didn't give me no money. <laughs> <laughs> I am my I, dad's child. Yeah, I think you went went to the bursar's <laughs> office. The bursar's office, if you don't to know, is cashier. where you go pay your bills to the school. And you wrote that check. And that was another one of those moments. A moment prior to that where I was like, Woo, Jesus, I didn't found her for real, for real, for real. I came, this was my first Thanksgiving. I did not spend with my family in my entire life. I was in New York at the time, actually. And I came down for Thanksgiving and you cooked. I can't cook, y'all. I tell it all the time. If you pass away, you better have some frozen meals for me or else I'm going to have to get married quickly because I can't to. cook. <laughs> I will starve to death. Or my girls better come home. Well, my oldest better come Jamie. home and take care of me because the youngest going to be sitting there with me looking like, what do we do now? But you cooked up a full meal and that was one of, you know, I didn't have a list, but that was something that mattered to me. You had to be able to cook because my mama could cook, right? Your mom can cook. And so those two things right there were kind of those sealing the deal kind of moments for me because it was like, okay, she's ambitious. She's beautiful. She's kind. She has a great personality, her character. All these things are great. Uh, then it was like, okay, now let's start to nitpick, right? Because if we picking someone, this is my life long pick i'm not picking today and then i'm gonna change again six months from now knowing that i wasn't trying to make a change i had to really be sure and so while there wasn't a list there was those i think those fine tuning pieces and when i started to realize those things that you had done then it was very clear to me that look i'm not going to lose her i'm not going to let somebody else come along and swoop her off her feet sweep her off her feet so that's when I knew, like, I knew that I knew that I knew that you were the one. This whole episode just sounds like it was an ode and a dedication to Nick Scott. Well, it should be because you're deserving of it. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Naked Proverbs podcast. We want you to truly have a happy marriage. We want you to continue to thrive in your marriages and indulge in your spouses on a regular basis. Don't forget to follow the Naked Proverbs on whatever podcasting platform you listen on. And we will talk to y'all in the next one. Peace.